All right, my friends, this is it. The last Ender 3 style 3D printer I'm gonna review on Makers Muse for quite some time. The X Vico Pioneer. And it's actually got a few things that really do set it apart from the rest. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. And let me be completely upfront. I love it when a new company comes onto the scene to try to prove their worth. And Xvico got in touch with me through Naomi Wu, Sexy Cyborg. So thank you so much Naomi for introducing them to me. And they're a new small company making their first foray into 3D printers with the Pioneer. So this is clearly based on the Ender 3. And the Ender 3 is an open source machine, again, thanks to the work by Naomi through Creality. So there's many style of machines that are now very similar to the Ender 3. So what sets this one apart from the original and is it better or worse or just different? Well, let's look at the specs. So the Pioneer has a build volume of 220 by 220 by 240 millimeters. So almost exactly the same as the Ender 3. And it comes in a kit again with the difficult parts pre-assembled for you. I actually built this machine over on Makers Muse Live, if you want to check out the assembly process. It was very straightforward, very similar to the Ender 3, except the wiring was a little bit more difficult. You actually had to put things into some screw connections. It's not just all plugs. So that is a little bit more challenging, but it's not that different. And it took about the same amount of time for me to assemble as the Ender 3. Mechanically, it is, again, very similar with the rollers on aluminum extrusion V slot. And it has this metal, cover at the front which does set it apart aesthetically to the other machines. One of the key features that I really do like about this one is the color touch screen. Now I just recently reviewed the Tronxy XY2 and that also has a color touch screen which I did like. This one is a lot smaller. <laughs> it's tiny, it's functional but some of the items are a little bit hard to hit especially when you're changing temperatures. You know it's a little bit difficult to hit it with your my, my big fat fingers but it does work, so don't let the size put you off. It is still functional, you just gotta be a little bit more careful. And the extruder design is the same. Bowden style from the back coming into the front. Although I have done some tweaks to this, this tube is new. What it came with was a very loose uh, internal diameter tube. I don't know if that's what's shipping now, but these tubes I recommend changing on pretty much all the Ender 3 style machines with Capricorn tubing if you can, or just some slightly high quality PTFE. This extends all the way into the nozzle, but actually surprisingly this machine did come with the style where it has a little bit of PTFE and the nozzle separate. And that's something that Chuck over on his channel is experimenting with in this video. But I've just replaced it with a PTFE all the way down to the end, just like all the other Ender 3 machines. And it works quite well using the Cura profile I've been using on all these machines now. And I'm gonna keep whinging about it, but it has a micro SD card. They all have micro SD cards. This one sits at the front here, and the, the card it came with actually had no branding or marking on it whatsoever. It's really funny. It's, I don't know what size it is. It's completely blank. I assume it's an eight gig, but it's just, why not, I guess? It's worth noting as well that my machine comes ready for a filament runout switch, but it didn't come with one. So you can get them very cheaply. They're just a micro switch and it actually has the cable on the, the plug on the cable loom ready to go. Uh, I don't know if that's unique to my machine, but you could attach a filament runout sensor if you needed to. Um, the actual mounting points there ready to go. And one very small thing that I do like to see on these cheaper machines is bigger limit switches. The Ender 3 has tiny, tiny switches that I find have a bit of if issue with uh, repeatability. But uh, when you go a bit bigger, like these ones, they're a little bit more reliable, a little bit more robust, and I do like to see that on these machines. But the Xvico Pioneer did one thing that's completely different to everyone else in the category, which I think's really quite cool and quite brave of them. This print bed, all right, so it's not heated. This machine does not come from factory with a heated bed. They did send me an additional heated bed that I could retrofit, but the power supply that it comes with clearly isn't powerful enough to run a heated bed. So what makes this bed so special if it's unheated? Well, it's got this glass surface and mine comes with this sort of textured top, which I actually quite like. With a little bit of glue, things stick really well, even though it's not heated. But the key difference is it's a removable print bed. Check this out. So basically you grab it 
and then you just pull it out and it, it just slides out. And then you can not worry about upsetting your bed level, which is just this, the bog standard manual four point leveling. You can actually just put it on the edge of a table with a spatula very safely and carefully knock prints off because they do stick very well and then just slide it back in and you're good to go. You haven't stuffed up your level, you haven't damaged anything, you haven't messed up with the rollers or the belts. I really like to see that actually, it's really cool. And the whole assembly, I don't know where it's come from. I doubt XVCO designed this from scratch, I could be wrong, but it's all injection molded and it's really precise. So that's cool, I like that. I really like seeing people try new things in these categories. But trying new things doesn't translate to printing better. So how does the XVCO Pioneer fare against its brethren. Well, I did this print first, which is meant to be, I think, Baymax. Um, this is my fault. I, uh, I accidentally plunged the head into the print after stopping it, because I realized this was taking way too long. It's a terrible demo print, it, it takes forever. But uh, it printed well. But I've not started to notice, with this machine, it's a 32-bit control board, same as the Tronx EXY2, but the uh, Ender 3 is 8-bit. Um, and it has very pronounced ridges where the triangles in the file are. And it's very, very pronounced in this model. Other models, not so much, but this one, very pronounced, and it was just taking forever, so I stopped it, but it proved the machine did work. So I went on to do some more tests. First of which was stringing, made sure that my profile, which was tweaked, actually stopped stringing on this machine, and it does. So what about tolerances on this printer? Can it fare as well as the Ender 3 or the Tronxy XY2? Well, yeah. Um, some of you may remember this filament is actually from SaneSmart. It's their PLA Pro filament. And this is completely free. So the 0.15 is tight, but not as tight as some other machines. And I did use a screwdriver to release it, but this is off this machine. With a raft, everything released down to 0.15 using my Cura profile, and that's really impressive. So well done to XVCO. Next were the gears. This is exactly the same G code as I threw at the Tronx XY2. Looking close at them, yes, I think this machine does suffer a little bit of the roller inaccuracies as the as the XY2 does. You can see that some of the layers and extrusion accuracy is uh, poor but you can definitely still do functional prints on this machine. Keeping in mind, non-heated bed, all of these prints are PLA. You won't be able to do ABS or PETG. It's actually really interesting. I did want to compare the quality of this machine to the Ender 3, and I used this really cool dinosaur head sculpt, which I'll link in the description. You can clearly see that extra um, detail that the machine's getting compared to the Ender 3, but also the artifacting it's now getting because of the, uh, the uh, more aggressive jerk and acceleration settings. So there's gotta be a good middle ground, I reckon. I think the Ender 3 is too, uh, too floppy, I suppose. I don't know what the right word is. The acceleration is probably too slow, um, but I think the uh, XVCO Pioneer is too aggressive. I think um, they could tune this down a bit, or you could, and you'd get less of that sort of bump weird artifact on the triangles as it changes direction. But it does print really fast. It does seem to print faster because of those settings than other machines. And then I wanted to throw something really challenging at this 3D printer, but I've printed enough torture tests for my workshop for now. And I've been playing around with actually exporting MMD models from Miku Miku Dance, which are PMD or PMX files, and converting them to STLs for 3D printing. And I thought I'd throw these at the XVCO Pioneer, I know, like I did not expect it to work. This is the first one, absolutely tiny, not great. The head broke off and the underside of the hair is, has failed. But these are underside points, most 3D printers can't do that. So I tried again with the head, but like this direction, and it printed okay. Again, there's some clear layer inaccuracies going on, um, and the points are quite sharp, but there's a bit of blobbing, and some under extrusion as well. So yeah, it's not gonna give you the most accurate print, but it did still do it, and this one blew me away. So I sent this to the printer like this, full of support material. And let it run for an entire day, using the cheapest gray PLA I have. <laughs> really cheap stuff. And it finished, and I pulled the support material off, and this is what we're left with. I can't believe this finished. The ponytail. I can't believe the ponytail worked. Can't believe most of the hair worked. Again, the front point was just too sharp and it broke. 
but even the hands are pretty good. Like the fingers are so delicate. Look, if this is the quality you can expect of a machine at this price point, you gotta be happy with that. You could surely tune the rollers to be a little bit better in tension and adjust the belts. This front belt could be a little bit tighter, but I could not ask anything more from a machine at this price point. And it holds its own against the much more popular Ender 3 and the, the Tronxy XY2. So where does that leave our conclusion then? Well, it's really a choice of what do you value more? Do you want a heated bed? Do you want a removable print surface? Do you want a machine with a touch screen? Do you want a machine with a nice glass bed that you can pull out? What do you want out of a 3D printer? It's even in this class, this Ender 3 style 3D printer class, there's so much variation and you gotta really think, what do you want? And then you go get the machine that suits you rather than going for the one that everyone screams about. XVCO came out of nowhere and I have to say, there are some things about this machine that are fantastic. There are two small things I need to complain about though before I finish up. The cooling fans I do need to complain about. Yours may not come with an actual part cooling fan, which is not okay, you need a part cooling fan. This is clearly very rushed and assembled to my machine, but the main cooling fan for the hot end in mine vibrates like crazy and I'm sure that also does damage to the print quality. And there's one major safety consideration with this printer. I'll move this across. The power supply is housed down here, underneath the machine. If someone lifts this machine up from the base, their fingers go straight into the electronics and they could easily touch mains wiring. That's not okay. I've told Xvico they need to put a cover there. So Xvico guys, you need to fix that. That is a serious safety concern. You need to fully cover up the main side. You can't just have it under the machine. Uh, so if you do get the machine guys, keep that in mind, lift it up from the side or put a cover there yourself. It's not a complete deal breaker, but it's one that you really need to consider. Um, I take mains wiring safety very seriously, as a lot of you will know, and that is not okay. Anyway guys, that's the XVCO Pioneer, and that concludes the last Ender 3 style 3D printer review I'm gonna do on this channel for probably a very long time, if ever again. They're a great class, they're a budget class, but I'm done with them. There's tons of videos online for you to make an informed choice on getting the best 3D printer for your needs. And if you did find this video useful, guys, I would love to have you subscribe to Makers Muse. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Purchase links down below. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.